So this is a very um, introductory talk to the um, to Mesos frameworks and different kinds of frameworks. So I would like a, um, a show of hands to who already knows um, what Mesos frameworks are, who's already using Mesos. Okay, so I'm hoping, I hope I, I, hope I don't disappoint you. I'm a software engineer working at Mesos um, here on Mesos, and before that I worked was working on distributed databases, and I have a physics background, so that's me. You can reach me under that email address. I don't use Twitter or something like that. For that. So let's first talk about um, what we have, um, what kind of players we have at work in a Mesos stack at the, at the different layers, basically since this is one of the big, um, and one of the great features of Mesos, how it separates um, things into layers. So at the very bottom of a Mesos stack, we have, sitting, have Mesos sitting, abstracting away resources, like um, physical machines with um, CPUs, memory, GPUs, this. On top of that, we have frameworks talking to Mesos, which in turn, the frameworks then run tasks, which are what we are ultimately interested in, since the tasks perform the interesting work we care about. And all that is nicely separated into layers. So the tasks up here talk to the frameworks below them. Tasks don't talk to Mesos. And the frameworks talk to Mesos, and um, basically communicate between the tasks and, the task and Mesos. So just to reiterate, Mesos is, is concerned with tracking and scheduling the resources it gives, it gives out. And the frameworks then are concerned with scheduling actual um, interesting computation on top of these Mesos resources. So this is the job of, of frameworks then. So one example here, how that works in, in practice. This is um, how resource, uh, resources are allocated. And there's some, maybe some of you already heard um, the two-level scheduling approach, and this is um, in an action. So we have some Mesos master node sitting here talking to agent nodes, which are the physical machines performing the work, sitting um, below it. And these agent nodes run some executors, which are in turn uh, running the tasks. So what happens here is that an agent node shows up and says, Hey master, see I have um, four CPUs, some memory, some disk for you to run tasks on. The master takes that and in some allocation module then some allocation module decides um, that it should offer that to framework one, for example, because framework one is not running a lot of tasks at the moment. So framework one gets offered these resources that came from that agent. Yeah. And then framework one can and decide what it wants to do with these resources. And this framework one here, for example, it decides it want, wants to run, so it, the framework has its own scheduler, and the scheduler in the framework decides it wants to run two jobs on this task. So the framework talks back to the agent and says, run task one on these resources, and task two on these other resources. And these are the resources that were offered here, not different resources. And then the Mesos master, in turn, can tell the agent to effectively execute the task. So the framework talks through the master to the agent. And um, yeah. So this gives us a lot of flexibility, this approach, because it isolates the framework from the actual agents running running the task. And um, then it really separates the responsibilities between Mesos and the framework. The frameworks don't need to know about machines, and Mesos does need to know very little about, about tasks running on these and how they should be run. <laughs> so just to summarize this introduction, so the tasks, they are really um, domains, solving domain-specific problems, and that's what they care about. The framework, in turn, provides um, some environment where these tasks can um, run without needing to know too much about that um, distributed environment. A task um, status, updates tasks going down, all that just can be abstracted away in, in the framework, and, the, and Mesos provides all the low-level abstractions for the physical realities. So that each of these um, different layers can um, work um, with what it's most um, capable of, basically. So 
each of these um, actors here can be specialized. There's also physical machines and how to work with these, the framework to set up some environment that fits well to the goal it has and the task with really solving the problems. Of course, there are other tools Mesos provides to run distributed applications. And I just list some examples here. For example, there are roles which are related um, to how resources are allocated or how um, yeah, if resources can be in a certain role and then they would be offered to frameworks and other roles under certain rules or we can set up um, fairness between roles that um, for example the big data team does not eat more resources than it should be from the web team so our web servers don't go down. There's also quotas to enforce that even more so we have some guarantees for how much will be allocated if possible. We can make reservations for example to um, set certain machines with certain attributes aside for, for certain tasks and um, we can run, uh, we can create volumes with um, live longer than the task so if the task goes away the data is not immediately destroyed and the tab like track um, how, um, let me track or expose basically how machines are available and go down from scheduled maintenance and um, of course, like isolation, which is um, related to all the containerization talks you will hear about. It. <coughs> and there are more. But these all sit at a very low level, so Mesos um, provides them to frameworks to program against. So Mesos is the, some sort of distributed systems kernel in the end. And um, frameworks, they are like user led interfaces. Like you would program some libc against system calls, and you would implement your GTK calculator against some, some lightning. So let's talk a little bit about the frameworks. So, so what kind of workloads do people typically run on some, some large installations? So I just have some examples here, but I think they kind of represent um, like the big um, groups of workloads. So like at the very top, there's like interactive big data analysis, for example, with Spark or ETL applications where we crunch some, where we reduce some data from um, into some smaller form. Or we might be interested in running applications which, which can scale to a like, large extent to have, for example, uh, also high availability requirements satisfied. Or we might be interested in running large interdependent distributed applications where many services talk to each other and a single machine is just not enough to do that and that drives us into some large cluster environment. And um, the grouping I have made here is, is roughly going from um, more general to more specialized. Yeah. So the tasks on the top will be more specific to some certain um, problem domain, for example, big data applications here on the top and then at the bottom more general applications of, of running um, a large um, cluster. And um, these different workloads in the end um, lead to some certain grouping of, of frameworks that try to satisfy these um, um, different uh, workload requirements that users bring. So. Um, so this, I, I will mention some examples here. This is taken from the from the Mesos um, documentation, and this is not a not a this is not a clear cut separation, but some sort of grouping. So if you feel this grouping is not um, fair, don't be mad at me because it's just it's a little fuzzy. So there's a big group of frameworks that try to address big data and processing problems. A um, big group of, of frameworks that perform um, scheduling of batch jobs, like for example ETL jobs, which I mentioned on the last slide, and um, a group of frameworks which um, deals with lo running long-running services, which need to um, be kept um, available and need to be scaled, and um, that kind of thing. For example, web running distributed, um, um, highly available web servers, for example, that could be addressed in this group here. So just to mention some examples, so this is the canonical list from the Mesos documentation. And um, what, what you might know is, for example, running Hadoop jobs. So this is kind of very specific to the 
problem domain of running, um, analyzing um, data in a certain framework or running API jobs. So they are also specialized, Spark and Storm. So there are all these um, tools here are basically, or these frameworks here basically are problem domain specific adapters to Mesos. So we can run our MPI application, not just on a machine with multiple cores, but on a large distributed um, cluster. For, for batch scheduling, some examples here. So um, batch scheduling means that we want to run some job that triggered by some external um, stimulus, basically. And um, in a Linux system, one example of that would be cron, which is where the stimulus is just some point in time, or would and um, would, or would also be um, some data pipeline where we process some data, and as soon as some data is ready, we run the next job. Like for example, if you run a make job with GNU make, would run in stages and, and produce some some product product in the end. And this is um, then driven by being some some dependency being ready. And um, like for example, Kronos here is a framework which can um, just maps um, directly on the what Cron provides. Or Jenkins is a is a tool to build um, software so that kind of maps on, on my make example and cook for example is a batch scheduler to, to run um, spark jobs and uh, can also do well, cook actually does much more but it also fits in the batch scheduling um, category and um, frameworks for long running services um, like I said these are concerned with um, safely running some distributed applications so we can um, scale with demand and also make sure that um, our service that our task the service our task provides is always um, available and the big pro big frameworks i will talk more about here are aurora apache aurora and, and marathon okay since apache Aurora and Marathon are really high-level frameworks which can be used to manage arbitrary workloads on a cluster, including other frameworks. So you might use, for example, Marathon to launch um, a Kubernetes schedule, or a Kubernetes framework on top, you could do that. And um, so these um, meta frameworks, like we call them, are so general that I would say that they are in effect like some, some shell for a distributed system. Not a GUI shell, not a terminal shell, but some some other shell, but for a distributed system here. So I don't know how useful that is, how much you can see of this. So this is just some example of how you would configure um, a task in, in Aurora, here on the left-hand side, or always keep that on the left-hand side, or Marathon on the right, and they don't do the exact same thing. So this is just to demonstrate some, some concepts. So what you see, let's start with Marathon. So Marathon, you see this is some, some JSON configuration, which is um, very descriptive in the end. And here we have some, some different applications that are grouped into other groups. And we can, for example, define dependencies on the stream of um, applications and make sure that, um, for example, if the dependency, so this, um, let's say this group here has a dependency database, this one. So if database goes down, um, this service here will be, um, we will realize that it's not, um, cannot work anymore. And we can expose that through dependencies to Marathon. So Marathon can, for example, restart this database group here. So this would then restart a MongoDB and a MySQL server, or MySQL framework, basically. Well, no, MySQL task. So these are tasks. So this is very, on a very descriptive level, I would say, and, and Aurora uses a different approach. So this is basically some domain-specific language you see here on the left-hand side, which mimics um, um, Python with um, some um, with some um, templating mix-ins, but not in this example. Here in this um, example, we start some Python file that we run here directly but it has a dependency on that file being there. So there's another process which copies a file into the environment where this later process is running. And we can like formulate in this domain specific language that is like sequential. So we depend on the ordering of these tasks. And um, there are other 
ways tasks can be, be combined and one can um, nest that to some, some depth. And um, so this is a more, I would say, more programmatic way to describe it. So this, this is more descriptive on this side and this is more programmatic. And then we can, of course, start some job and assign them to some environments or clusters, roles that I mentioned earlier, or we can, of course, name them so we can, can identify them later on. And the, these um, meta frameworks can also provide, um, since they are effectively shells, like I argued, they can provide new additional abstractions <laughs> which, which are not available and not exposed by Mesos and might be making more sense in, on the framework level. For example, um, these um, frameworks um, can provide um, deployments, how I roll out my applications or how I update them in a way that they always are highly available and um, satisfy the constraints I have, or we can integrate um, tasks into service discovery systems. We can um, maybe launch stateful applications. So like this Python example I talked about before was the stateless application. A web server would be a stateless application where the database cares about its state. So, and these meta frameworks can add tools for that. We can also, since we have a two-level scheduling in, in, in Mesos, we can um, have some, introduce some new scheduling ideas that we have on top of that, like constrain what kind of resources the framework uses, or we can, for example, uh, preempt tasks if we run low on, on, on resources. And there are possibly more, but I'm just going to go into a couple of these here. So, high availability is um, a pretty simple concept, maybe, but very interesting. And the framework can solve that for us, so the task doesn't need to know too much about it, then um, can be, the framework can be very useful. So um, both uh, Marathon and Aurora, they um, basically um, hook into health checks and readiness checks, which can be, um, which can tell if a task can still function and yeah, can still function. And um, with that, we can make sure that our um, workloads are always um, running and become highly available. And that can be used in, when we deploy an application, to, for example, to check if, if our deployment was successful, or we can restart tasks which, are, which become unhealthy. We can even change the configuration for, let's say we run a web server, and we would like to update a configuration. We can update instances one by one and make sure that um, the tasks we start with the new configuration are still healthy and satisfactory. And, uh, or we can scale up applications, for example. If we see that tasks become irresponsive, unresponsive, we can scale up more instances to make sure that we, uh, we cope with the demand. So, um, just, um, so Aurora and, and, and Marathon do this in different ways. So, Mar Aurora basically um, launches the process and then monitors what the status of that process in the system is. So we have some executor, which launch that, so this some process, and we can look for the PID of that process and see if it's still there. So that's the, what, what Aurora will always do, but we can also hook in some other process in that um, DSL I showed earlier, we can hook that in and run it in parallel with our task, and um, that um, special health check process just needs to respond to two, uh, three different requests, so like health, which would say, okay, this um, task is still healthy, or we could instruct it to <laughs> quit soon. So soon we will be quitting, so we tell that health, we can basically trigger some cleanup inside uh, the task, or we can just abort it. And this is the protocol Aurora uses for that. Marathon on the other side um, directly is, is more general, I would say, in that it directly exposes the, uh, the Mesos so Mesos has some abstractions to write down health checks and how they work, and, and Marathon directly exposes that in the app definition where we can. So this is an application definition here in JSON format. So this is called Rails app, and it executes some Rails server from some Docker container, for example. And um, we can just define an extra field here, which is called health. And um, in this example here, we would talk via TCP 
TCP to some port. So port zero here would be some um, port that is assigned to the task via some offer. So some port gets offered, and um, so this is some dynamic port number here. And um, there's also other ways to to run um, health checks, for example, HTTP. So this is more like some HTTP. We could map that into this definition also, or we could also run some task to see if our if our if our application that we define in such a way is still healthy. And um, another um, interesting um, interesting tool that meta frameworks can provide is, is to hook into service discovery. Since these meta frameworks, they run, they, they launch a task, they can, um, they of course know what, what that ta where that task is running and what ports it, for example, uses. And um, that is crucial so that applications in some distributed um, environment can find each other. For example, where, where sits my database? Where is my web server? And um, both Aurora and, and Marathon can announce where applications are running to some external service discovery system and for, can also, this can also be integrated into framework specific ACLs, like access control list to control who can actually um, discover some other service and, and find him and eventually talk to him. So Aurora uses a very, um, um, uses one approach which is um, we define in our, so this is some other app I have here. So this runs some task. This task runs a process which is an app. So this runs a HTTP server. So this is running an HTTP server listening on some dynamic port here. So this is the Aurora way to write down a port which has the alias um, HTTP here in this case. And um, down here in the job definition we just say well, one way to, to hook into service discovery is just to define some default announcer object, which can also be customized. And that would just create um, Zookeeper nodes. So Aurora writes to Zook, uses Zookeeper, and um, which we can query then from some external systems or from, from some external um, tools. So in this case, it would, for this kind of application, it would create some status. So this task is alive, and it uses some endpoints. So there's some Aurora endpoint defined here and some HTTP endpoint. And they are the same. So they are aliased. And then we can basically ask Zookeeper by querying this node here, where can I find that service? And then we can talk to that web server on this node on the, under this port. Marathon um, can um, hook into, on the other hand, hooks into service discovery, uh, on discovery info um, fields that Mesos uses actually internally, which can be queried via Mesos. And um, so here we have the same app in Marathon speak. So here you see like this is more like the, some programmatic way to build up some job. And here the Marathon way, which is more descriptive. So we just have some app that runs some command using some port. So this is the zero port counting from zero that was given to that task running on some resources. And we have some definitions for port here. ports here. So we have our port zero, which is this one. Some protocol, I guess this should be. <coughs> no, that, I mean, that would work. And some name. So we also give some alias to that port. Like, so we use that HTTP, we could call it anything we want here to. And then Marathon will publish that to, to Mesos, and we can ask the Mesos, some, for example, the Mesos tasks endpoint hey, tell me about the ports this, um, this um, application exposes, and we would find something like that. So this will get, give us back a JSON response. And um, so this should actually read app here. So this is this here. And then we can find our port. <coughs> and also our host, which I did prompt here. So we, now we know how to run um, tasks with, which don't crash too early. And we know how to find them, and now we can like look at something slightly more complicated. So since um, Mesos offers um, resources to frameworks, and frameworks can then schedule on their own, we have of course a way to, uh, we have some freedom how to, how to run tasks then. We might have some constraints on how tasks are placed. For example, we might want to run um, 
some job in a machine multiple times or multiple times per rack or n times in a cluster. For example, a rack to make sure that the task is running if the power fails on one rack. Or multiple times per machine so we can share some, some state, for example, between different tasks. We might also want to say that we want to we don't want to run a certain job on a certain machine, for example. Not run jobs on a machine that doesn't um, announce that it has SSD disk, which is fast. And um, all these, both these frameworks, Aurora and, and Marathon, they provide some ways to, to express these scheduling constraints. So this is, in the end, constraints what kind of offers a framework would accept to run tasks on. <coughs> so, what, so here we run again. We run again some Rails app, okay. So for example, this Rails app, we would like, in, so in the Aurora definition, the constraints go down here in the job. So this just runs a single process, but we say that this should be, for example, only running on nodes which we which have some apt attribute public, maybe because we want to expose that um, Rails server directly to, to outside um, requests, or we want to we don't want to run more than three of these real servers per rack because, for example, so actually this runs eight or ten instances here which you can hardly read. So this runs ten instances at the same time. And we could say, let's not run more than three per rack because it doesn't gain us much in, in high availability. And we might only want to run one per host. So this gives us some control over how, highly, how available this um, um, tasks will be in case of failure, basically. And in Marathon, we would formulate that in a different way, but kind of similar. So this would, for example, here, we would use, um, so these are some, like some operators we define here, and then we here have some, we have some attributes. So we have, no, here we have some objects, and here we have some attributes, and these operators are then applied. So for example, here we want, to run only on nodes with type public node. Or we want to group by is another operator, which um, means that we want to distribute tasks in a like round robin fashion across rack ID. So this would um, go um, and um, run tasks um, on each, or try to run tasks on each rack. And we can also constrain that we don't want to run more than three per rack, for example, which mirrors this here, this limit per rack ID in Aurora. And we want to run a single task for hosting. So this kind of mirrors this here. And there are also other operators like like and unlike where we can um, put, um, do some regular expression checks for on these, um, for example, here, these expressions. And um, with that, we can build up some, some scheduling scheme that fits our application. So as a, I think this is my last point, yeah. So as a last point, um, let's talk also about um, stateful applications. Since um, big data applications, they typically work with state, and this is um, kind of, I think, um, one big um, advantage of using, of using Mesos that it can actually work well with stateful applications. So applic um, applications, need to typically persist, but the stateful applications need to persist disk to some um, physical disk volume, for example, your database needs to persist some information to, to disk. And um, since tasks can always fail, and they probably will fail, we would, it would be nice if we would be able to restart that task on the same machine where we persisted that data. And, um, or we might want to run, if we run some batch processing pipeline, we might want to run um, tasks close to that data as well, for example, in the same rack or maybe in the same machine. Even. And um, both Aurora and, and, um, and uh, Marathon, they can hook into Mesos and use, for example, persistent volumes or scheduling constraints to, to give us um, stateful applications. And um, so Aurora does this on a very, on a very um, general and rather, I would, I would say it's, it's Slightly unflexible, but it, it works well for, for for many people. So in Aurora, we can, or if we start some agent node, major agent with some attribute dedicated, and then some 
identifier here. This is treated especially by Aurora. Then we can add some constraint, which I talked about earlier. So we can say this task, this, this job here, this Aurora job should run on nodes which have the attribute dedicated set to DB data. This should be lowercase, I guess. So this is lowercase. This should also be lowercase. Otherwise, this wouldn't run. And um, by, by that, we can make sure that we um, run that task on, on that machine again. And uh, for example, we could then mount some, some disk into that machine. Or we could have some just some directory where we where we store state. In Marathon, this um, it hooks more generally into persistent volumes, which are a way to express um, that we would like to work with some disk resource, which should not go away immediately with the task going away. So here we have some command running. So this is called who and runs this command here. So some database working on some directory maybe. This is how I wrote this down here. And um, then this, um, this um, application can declare that it wants to work with some volume, which we would like to see under the path data in the root of the task with some certain size. So this, this um, application declares that it wants to use 128 megabyte of that um, volume, and it wants to read and it wants to write. And we need to set use the Mesos container as it is, so this field is also required. And um, with this app definition, um, we will, this, this task will then be able to find this um, volume again should it fail. Okay? So I don't know how much time. So I, that's my summary, so I'm done. So frameworks. So I showed you that frame, how frameworks are um, user interfaces for distributed applications, and um, there are frame, many kinds of frameworks, and they can interface to different kinds of tasks like big data processing toolkits like Spark or Hadoop or MPI. We can or can be used to implement batch schedulers, to implement um, data processing pipelines or um, distributed prods, or they can even there's even frameworks which can manage other frameworks and be more general, and these meta frameworks, Aurora and Marathon that I showed like examples, they provide new tools on, on top of, of Mesos to build distribution, distributed applications with high level of control. And they are a good starting point to, to go from there, I would say, that's it.